18, 23 to 24. Did you know that life is a contest? From the time of your birth, there has been a contest for your soul, your family, your destiny, and ultimately your faith in God. Paul in Ephesians 6 verse 11 encourages believers to put on the full armor of God because we are in a contest. In Ephesians 6 verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against evil powers. It is time for revival. It is time to bring back the glory to the body of Christ. Join the Mamba brothers as they expose the works of the enemy so that you can manifest the glory of the Lord. The contest glory back to the body of Christ. There's an army. There is power. Come on. The contest. First Kings 18. 23 to 24. Did you know that life is a contest? From the time of your birth, there has been a contest for your soul, your family, your destiny, and ultimately your faith in God. Paul in Ephesians 6 verse 11 encourages believers to put on the full I bring your greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a joy to be here. It's a joy to be um, together to come and share the bread together. I believe that God has a word for you and God has a word for me. And I believe that God is going to speak to us this time around from his word. For I know that God is sovereign. I know that God is powerful. I know that God is glorious. I know that God is exceeding. There is no one that compares to him. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you this evening. Thank you for your word that you have given us. Your word, Jehovah God, is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word, Jehovah God, separates the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow. Father, we thank you that this evening you will speak a word. Speak a word, Lord. Speak a word. We are here to be blessed and we are here to hear you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. I come again on the contest. A program that we have been running with my elder brother, uh, the contest with uh, Kennedy Mambwe. is not here with me. I am the youngest of the Mambwe brothers. And the grace of the Lord has been so sufficient to us. The grace of the Lord has been so good to us. We are so grateful that God has given us this chance, this opportunity to speak to your life. And we don't take it for granted. I'll be, um, I'll be, I'll be brief. And then after that, we are, we are going to pray. After that, we, we are going to pray. I want to go to the book of Acts chapter number 16. The book of Acts chapter number 16. The book of Acts chapter number 16. Okay. The Bible says in verse 10, and after he had seen a vision immediately, we endeavored we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for, a, for to preach the gospel unto them. Now, Paul had the vision, and in the vision he saw a man from Macedonia asking him to come and speak the gospel to the Macedonian people. And having discussed it and agreed that this is what God is saying, they decided to go towards the place where the Lord showed them. Let's go to verse 11. Therefore, losing from uh, Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neopolis. And from thence to Philip, which is the chief city of the part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was what to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there. 
So we see Paul and Silas and the people that they are in Tuarej, they went into the city, but when they went into the city, they did not just stay and wait until they begin to preach the gospel. They gathered themselves together and went to the river to begin to pray. They went to the waters to begin to intercede, to begin to prepare themselves for the wait. I want us to know that prayer is very key for every believer. Everything that you want to do must begin with prayer. If you want to do a crusade, you must send prayer ahead of you. I want you to know that prayer can be your protocol. Prayer can wait for your tomorrow. Prayer can be your usher for next year. You can send your prayer into your future and you find your prayer waiting for you. Anything that you want to start, before you start it, you must send prayer ahead of it. There will never be a meaningful revival in Zambia without a praying church. I want you to know that every revival is preceded by prayer. Everything that we want to achieve and grow in prayer is paramount. So we see Paul and Silas, and they are in tourists before they begin to preach the gospel. First, they engage in prayer. One man of God was saying, When I study and prepare for the service, what I have is head knowledge. What makes the message powerful now is prayer. What adds the spirit to the message is prayer. A lot of churches, a lot of pastors, a lot of ministers have become lecturers, have become motivational speakers. They just give notes. Point number one, point number two. There is nothing, there is no difference with the lecturer in the lecture room. Because prayer has not been sought. We have not labored in the place of prayer. We have not labored in the closet. We need to pray. Now, I know there are people that make phone calls to be prayed for. Very, very important to be prayed for because we are at different levels of faith. Very different levels of faith. We see, we, we, we see it in, in the Bible. Jesus telling me that I've prayed for you. So we, we all need one another. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked the disciples to help him to pray. So there is nothing wrong in asking someone to help you to pray. But prayer must be our individual lifestyle. So they began to pray. Let's go to verse 14. A certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, purple of the city of Tytra, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Whose heart the Lord opened. Verse 15. Remember we are in Acts chapter number 16. Verse 15 now. And when she was baptized and the household, she besought her saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. You know, when you need a blessing, when you need, when you see people that carry grace, when you see people that God is using, you need to force your own blessing. The Bible says, she said to them, if you judge me to be a person that God can use to be a blessing in your life, I want you to come to my house. But the Bible says she constrained them. To constrain is to force them is to push them the same way at Abraham asked the three angels the three men that were passing he asked them to come and eat from his house the Bible says he kind of forced them we see it in the Shunammite woman saying to the man of God come and abide with us she says to the husband I perceive this one is a man of God when you see grace you must know what to do for you to attract grace when she saw Paul and his team, she constrained them, literally forcing them, literally begging them. You know, sometimes I tell people when, when, when someone you know is graced and they come to your house and you offer them a cup of tea and they say, I'm not taking, please offer them water. If they are not taking, offer them milk. If they are not taking, offer them even mints. Let them eat something from you because it's for your own blessing. The Bible says, anyone who gives a cup of water to the least of my servants shall by no means miss their reward. There is a reward in taking care of the visitors that God sent to you. The Bible says, do not neglect the entertaining of visitors for through that 
God, other people entertain angels. A lot of people's lives have been changed and transformed by knowing how to look after people that God has given an assignment. When God gives a man an assignment, when you take care of that man, when you take care of that woman, you are taking care of the assignment of God. And when you take care of the assignment of God, God will take care of you. This is the gospel. This is how it should be in the board of Christ. And the Bible says, okay, verse 16, and it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. A certain damsel, a certain young girl who was possessed with the spirit of divination. She met Paul and Silas. And this girl was making a master's rich by prophesying. For today's language, I can call it prophesying. Now, the Bible says she was possessed with the spirit of divination. She was a soothsayer. She was a wicked prophetess. She was not prophesying from the spirit of God. She was prophesying from the spirit of Satan. Now, let me say this and be quick. The Bible says, there are people that will come to the Lord and say, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I healed in your name. And Jesus will say, get out of here for I never knew you. Now, I want us to understand that the fact that somebody is performing miracles does does not qualify them to be of God. It is not every spirit that has gone into the world that is of God. No, that's why the Bible says test every spirit. There are certain people that are masquerading to be men of God. They are masquerading to be prophets of God. They are masquerading to be pastors and tomorrow they will be standing in the pulpit and preaching to you. Be careful who you sit under. Be careful who speaks in your life. It is not every spirit. A wicked spirit has gone into the world. There is a lot of satanism in the pulpit. I speak as a servant of God. Not attacking anyone but I want you as a member of the church to be alert. You must be prayerful before you submit to anyone. You must be able to go to judge the spirit. You must be able to test the spirit. There are a lot of people in the pulpit today who are carrying the spirit of divination. They can call your name. They can prophesy accurately but it is not of God. We are not saying there are no genuine prophets. They are there. There is a true gift of God to prophesy. But brethren, we must be careful in these end times. We must be very careful who is speaking in our lives, who is laying hands on you, who is putting oil on you. You need to know the people you are dealing with. You need to understand who is preaching to you and who is pastoring you. The times are so difficult. There is a lot of satanism. A lot of people have sold their soul because they want quick fix. They want quick money. They want influence. They want membership. They want to build bigger churches. It is not every church standing that is of Christ. No, it's not. I speak as a pastor. It is not. There are a lot of people in the body of Christ masquerading to be men of God, but they are hooves. Their intention is to steal your destiny. Their intention is to destroy you. But I know one day the Lord will bring sanity in the church. The Lord will bring sanity in the body of Christ. One day the Lord will expose them that are masquerading. The Lord will expose them. That's why the servant of God, Elijah, says we cannot continue like this. If God be God, let's save him. If Ba be Ba, let's save him. You can't be everywhere. You are pretending to be a pastor, but who will she cool up? Pukama Mbala, who will she cool at Stotunongo, who will she cool at Stephimiti for Saturday? As today, Saturday, you'll be doing things to prepare for the service. May God judge you. That is a wicked spirit. 
Jesus died for the church and you are using the church to champion your evil agenda. Jesus will judge you. I am saying Jesus, may God destroy your evil altars. May God expose your evil plans. May God open the eyes of your members that they begin to see what you are involved in. That they begin to realize what kind of a man and the woman you are. Deceiving the people of God. Is, is, is not good before the eyes of the Lord and you feel like you have always gotten with it. You have gotten away with it. God was giving you a chance to repent. But I warn you today, go back to Jesus. Stop those things that you are doing and go and repent and save God genuinely. Let me announce to you that it is better to have 10 members than to have thousands of people using demonic powers. It is better not to drive than to drive because you have sold your soul to the devil. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Come back to Jesus. There is nothing in Satanism. There is no peace in Satanism. There is no joy in Satanism. There is nothing, nothing, nothing. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. I want you to know that the biggest asset that the devil wants from you is your soul. Guard your soul jealously. A lot of people have sold their soul. I am saying this because I have been offered before. I have been contacted before to say, come and join us. We also started like you. But if you are straight, get this and this and this. I want to warn you that I would rather save God genuinely. Please, before you go to church tomorrow, tonight pray that God open my eyes about my pastor, about my bishop, about my reverend and my prophet. Is this a genuine servant of God? Before you go to church tomorrow, tonight ask God to open your eyes. Let God show you the kind of a man you are saving under. I want to announce to you that the devil is a liar. He wants to infiltrate the church. The best way he can destroy the church is to plant his own people in the church who are pretending to be men of God. But they know what they are doing. The Bible says this girl had the spirit of divination. She was able to clearly identify this is Paul and Silas. They are teaching us the way of the Lord. What she was saying was very true. But I want, to, I want you to know that even if what the devil says seems to be true, it has got an agenda. The devil is a schemer. He's doing that because he has an assignment. There is something that you want to get. That's why is scheming that way but i want us to understand today that god will make a way for the church god will destroy the spirit of satan that has gone into the world that has gone into the earth to destroy the body of christ may god open your eyes that you may see if your pastor is the wrong man may god open your eyes that they may be exposed in your dream may god be able to show you May you, may you be able to see the mysteries. The people of God have been deceived for too long. People are masquerading. They are preaching from the same Bible. They are calling. It's not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of my father, except he who does the will of him that sent me. Jesus says. They can say Jesus is Lord, but not by the spirit of the Lord. They can prophesy, but not by the spirit of the Lord. They will be, I know they will be preaching tomorrow. I know what I'm talking about. Tomorrow they will be standing in the pulpit, thundering, but Mambala, they know what they are doing in dark places. They use crocodiles. You know a crocodile is a wicked animal. A crocodile can be both in water and can be on the land. That is what they do. They can be in Jesus and they can be in Satan. They can be in Satanism and they can be in church. That is the spirit of a crocodile. A crocodile can be in water. A crocodile can be on the land. A crocodile can survive underwater. A crocodile can survive 
outside water. That is what they are using these demonic powers. The Lord will expose you. They are using a crocodile and the crocodile has got a, 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 the ability once it grips, it does not let go. A lot of you have been held up by evil powers in those churches. They are shrines and altars right where the man sits. Right on the pulpit. Under the pulpit. Underneath the pulpit. They have they have built an altar where they sacrifice. They are able to kill their relatives, their members, and the relatives to the members. Just to have some power. And there is an altar under their puppets. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over every evil altar that has been erected or oh, to destroy the boat of Christ. I consume it by the consuming fire of the Lord tonight on Saturday. May the angel of the Lord visit every church and terminate every evil agenda. Every evil agenda be terminated. As you stand tomorrow, may God do an exposure. You know the, 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 the crocodile has got teeth like this. Once it holds its prey, it does not let go. That is what these guys do. You can stay in the church no matter how many wrong things you see. You are thinking like it's normal. It's because there is a power that has held you. You feel like you want to leave, but you feel like, let me just step. I'm a church. You won't say, Chimo, I'm not campaigning for any church. I'm just saying, let God review to you what kind of a pastor is pastoring you. I'm very upset with what is happening in the body of Christ. We cannot continue like this. We need to put order. We need to bring back the true gospel of Jesus. Jesus did not die and shed his blood. That you start taking advantage of the saints. You start using Jesus. You start using using the church to 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 to, to use the church and no, no, that is not the desire of God. You can't use God to manipulate people, to manipulate the body of Christ. Man cannot, cannot, can you cannot. You will reap what you sow. You will reap what you saw. The crocodile has power to hold its prey and it makes its teeth. It has got so much teeth and so strong teeth. But I announce everyone who is under the power of darkness. You have stayed in a wrong place because you are under a spell. You have stayed under a wrong man because they have cast a spell on you. Today we break that evil spell. May you be free. May you be set free. May the Lord set you free. This woman was saying Paul and Silas, but not from the spirit of God. It's from the spirit of Satan. The Bible, I want to talk about the crocodile. The crocodile number two has a thick skin. The way these guys are, they make their members to be so thick-skinned that no matter what happens, they can't realize anything. Themselves too, they are so adamant and arrogant in what they are doing. You cannot change their mindset. They have gone into partnership with Satan. They have developed a thick skin. You know, if you want to pierce the, the, the skin of a crocodile, it will take you time. That's what they have done to their members. Even when the true gospel is coming, they are kind of immune. They can't, they can't, they can't. They can't. Me and Papa, I sworn and sim can't. They, 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 there's, a, there's a skin that is... Oh, may God help the church. The crocodile spirit. The Lord once showed me this crocodile, and now they use it. And when they attack you, this crocodile will swing its tail. And once it hits you, you don't survive. But I want you to know that the God who is in you is greater than whatever they are saving. God says, I'm building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Whatever they are doing shall not prevail. It shall not work in the mighty name of Jesus, the son of the living God. The Bible says this woman, she did this for many days, but Paul being grieved, and turned and says to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of her. And he came out at the same hour. 
Paul got upset. Paul, this woman kept on doing this day and night, every day. I want you to know that God has been watching you, seem to be doing this every day. And you seem like you are going, you are, you, 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 you are, you are managing to maneuver. And you seem like everything is going on well. There comes a time that God gets upset. And I want you to know that I came as, as a servant of God to announce that God is upset. God is not happy that you are using the puppet. Oh my God, to feather your personal evil, demonic, selfish agenda. The Lord will judge you. Judgment will begin in the house of the Lord. I want you to know that the axe head is on the root. Oh, every tree that does not bear fruit, the Lord will cut it down. I want you to know that judgment is coming your way. The Lord has been warning you. And I'm warning you as a prophet of God. I'm warning you as a servant of God The accent Is at the root The accent Is at the root God will cut Every wrong tree That my father has not planted in the church The Lord will approach it Paul got upset God becomes a grief of the people that have been using his name in vain. The people that have been masquerading and pretending to be saving him, but they have their own selfish agenda that they are saving. They are laying hands on people, yet they are planting spells. They are putting anointing oil on people, yet they are planting spells. That's why I tell my members, don't let anyone you don't know lay hands on you. No. Some pastor came to my church I, and he took the anointing oil and says, I want to anoint your members. I said, no, that's, 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 too, that's too much. You, you don't have that jurisdiction. No, the fact that you came to visit, you have no right to start anointing my members because <coughs> anointing oil is so significant, brethren. Oil is a personality. You don't just let anyone put oil on your head. Not at all. Don't even let anyone lay hands on you. Not at all. No. Because I want you to know the Bible says, Believers will lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. And Paul says to Timothy, uh, uh, Steer up the gift that you receive by the laying hands of the apostles. When the apostles laid hands on them, they deposited something in them. When someone lays hands on you, they deposit something. I want you to know that ministry is by impartation. If they have the right spirit, they will impart the right thing. If they have the wrong spirit, they will impart. A wrong thing. That's why Bible says believers who lay hands. Now, believers by laying hands on them, the Bible doesn't even say they will pray. The Bible just says believers who lay, just by laying hands, something begin to transfer from a believer to the sick person. Just by the laying of hands. Not even by prayer. Just by laying of hands. That must show you how important and how significant it is to know the man who is laying hands on you. I went to a certain church visiting in Livingstone and then I was invited. Of course I was not invited but I was invited for that meeting. Then the pastor was going around anointing people. So he came to where I sat and he wanted to put oil in me. I said no don't. Uh, then after the service, he came to me and says, Who are you? I says, I'm a pastor. Then he says, I just knew my pastor. And I said, no, siku futa. It's because I don't know you, so I'm so sorry that I had to do that. Because I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't take chances. This is life and death. I don't know you. There are people in this nation that God has taught me never to shake hands. God has taught me never to shake their hands. He's coming and I stretch my hand. I want to shake his hand and the Lord says, don't. Three times, same person. Three times. I'm talking about a pastor. I'm talking about a, a pastor. And the Lord shows me he has a ring here. And the Lord mentions to me details about that ring. And he says, if you greeted him, you were going to be under him for the rest of your life. And I said, never, never. 
I'm not saying everyone who puts on rings, I put on a ring. But they are demonic rings. They are demonic rings. I mean they are demonic rings. Be careful. I said be careful. Hey! Therefore you are a liar. I went to South Africa to do my own business. And I decided I can't stay at home. So I, I, I went into a church. This was a Nigerian church. And prophetic church. The husband was not in church. The wife was the one ministering that day. So after she finished ministering, then they have two hours of prophets. Two hours of prophets. After preaching. Two hours of prophets. And then she called me in front. I was a pastor by then. And then she says, I, you are a businessman. I can see your business has not been doing fine. And I shook my head. I said, no, I'm not a businessman. Then the, 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 the helper says, no, here you don't say no. You just agree. I said, no, I don't agree to what I, what is not true. That's not me. I'm not a businessman. I used to be in business. I'm not in business. Then the woman says, you are very stubborn. I said, yes, I am. I think I am stubborn because what you are saying is not making sense. Then she gets oil. Now, she, it was in a cupboard where she has to like, you know, like spray. She wants to spray on me in front of the church. The whole church, you know, prophetic churches are packed in South Africa. She wanted to spray. I said, no. Then she said, why? I said, I I'm not comfortable. After the service, she called for me. She says, why did you embarrass me? I says, I was not embarrassing you. I was protecting my destiny because I don't know you. You cannot put oil on my head. I don't know you. Your spirit and my spirit does not agree. I was just looking for where to worship. And that's why I sat behind. I wouldn't have come in front if you called for your otako. But because you called for me. That's why I stood up and came in front. But when you wanted to anoint me, I refused because I don't know you. Your destiny matters. Don't be naive. Don't be deceived. Let your eyes open. The church, the body of Christ must know. The problem we have with the church, you should ask God, God, is this what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to be? I'm not talking about a man that you know, a man that you know, a man who has been pastoring you, you know their character. But I'm so scared of how many pastors have shipwrecked and have started working with Satan. I am speaking as a pastor and I'm not mentioning any names, but I'm saying change body of Christ, the eyes must open because Satan has also planted his own. They were there in the time of Jesus. They were there in the time of the earth. Remember John. Remember that man who came to the disciples and says, give me some of this power. He had bewitched the whole community. They believed in his charm. And when he saw Philip doing the power of God, he says, I want some of this power. And they told him, go and perish. They are there. When Moses and Aaron cast their rode on the ground. It became a snake. They were also men who did the same. The fact that they have also changed their roads into snakes, it doesn't mean they are of God. They are of the devil. The fact that they can perform miracles doesn't qualify them to be of God. They are of the devil. They can preach, they can sing, they can kneel down, and you can even say, ah, I think, ah, ah, please pray. You know, the Lord opened my eyes and told me, if you are submitting under someone, you are submitting under someone. It's very, very difficult to know what kind of a person they are. Because I want, don't even play around with the aspect of submission. Being under someone. Being under someone, there is a lot of uh, 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 advantage they have on you. They can manipulate things against you. I want you to know that. They are also people that you cannot pick. They are into satanism, but they are so prayerful and they fast. And if you cannot pray more than them, you cannot see what is happening in their lives. I need to be going because of time. And after Paul casted out this demon, the Bible says, And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew him into the marketplace and to the rulers. Here is a scenario. 
Paul casted out a demon in one girl. And those people who were sending this girl, that's why you must know that there is a cartel. There is a cartel against the true and the genuine worship of God. There is a cartel. And any pastor, any man of God who want to be genuine, I want you to know that you'll be fought. I, I want you to know any man of God, if you are genuinely serving God, you are praying, you are fasting, you are helping people in deliverances, healings and things, God is using you mightily. I want you to know that you'll be fought. If you not, want not to be fought as a pastor, be lukewarm. Be lukewarm. Don't don't be prayerful. Don't fast. Then they'll let you go. But if you shake their establishment, they'll come after you. If you shake, that's why you must know where you stand. You must have a strong altar. You must also be connected to men and women of God that are standing with you, who have the right standing with Because these guys, they don't play. They can take you out. If they fail spiritually, they can come physically. That's how they are. That's what they live for. They are so adamant in their wicked ways. They are not ready to change and then one challenging them, they will come after him. John the Baptist, after speaking the truth, they rose a cartel against him. That is, that's what is happening in the board of Christ. There is a cartel. The church of Jesus Christ must be united. Why can't we be one? Why are we fighting one another? Jesus came for one church. Jesus came for one body. Why should the church rise against one another? You know these guys, they had the audacity to arrest Paul and Silas and take them to the rulers and go and manipulate the rulers, manipulate the whole village against Paul. And just by casting out a demon, imagine casting out a demon, lands Paul and Silas into prison. Oh my God. They brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitudes rose up against them, and the magistrates rent off, off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Here is a scenario. These guys are innocent. They have just cast out a spirit of divination. Brethren, when you shake their establishment, these guys are wicked. And your wickedness will not only take you to hell, God will judge you here before you go to hell. They made the whole city to rise against Paul and Silas. The Bible says the magistrates tore their clothes. They, they gave a, a wrong... You know, these guys... They work in numbers. They are a big team. I know. I know what I'm talking about. They are a big team. And they are everywhere. They can manipulate systems. They can manipulate systems. They can even manipulate the course of law against you. They can manipulate even your workplace against you. They can manipulate every other pastor against you so that you remain isolated. I know how they work. I know how they work. They would want you to be alone. But I want you to know it's better to be alone with Jesus than to be in the majority with wicked men and women. Now, the jealous in the church, in the body of Christ, has gone to too much. We need to come back to true Christianity, where we love one another, where we worship God in truth and in spirit. May God help the body of Christ. They, they, they met the whole city to rise up against Paul and Cyrus for doing what is right, for casting out a demon. And I've seen a lot of churches that say, no, demon casting, hey, 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 hey. they are not demons. Okay, okay. Jesus says, this son shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. When he called the twelve, the Bible says he gave them power over evil spirits. When he called the 70, he sent them to go and preach. But when they came back, the first thing they reported was, Master, even the demons obeyed us. I want you to know that most of the challenges people are going through is as a result of demonic powers. And these people I'm talking about, they use spells, they use cases, they use demons to hold 
their prey, to hold their victim. So when you come casting out demons and doing all sorts of things, they rise against you and they want you to go down. But I came to assure you, you are not going down. That's why when you are looking for a spiritual father, you are looking for a spiritual father. Mayo, 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 Mayo. Iredi Ashidio. Iredi Ashidio about spiritual father. Be careful. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we, oh, we, oh, we. I don't preach against a spiritual fatherhood. I have a spiritual father. I'm a man who is under authority. I submit, I tithe. I do what a son should do to a father. But I just want to say, when you are looking for a spiritual father, please be careful. Don't look at the affluence of someone. Don't look at uh, how big they are. Don't look at uh, how well they preach. Please be careful. Seek God. If possible, go for a retreat. Prayer and fasting retreat. Ask God. Even now, if you are submitting under someone, go alone and hide yourself. Don't tell him. Just go and pray and ask God, is this the right man? Most of you, you come back and tell me I made a mistake. I'm telling you as your brother, out of love. No malice. No malice. I am young. I don't even have any pastor who submits under me. I'm talking about uh, like I'm a spiritual father also. Spiritual. No. I'm not saying I want some people to come and submit to me. No. I'm just giving this word of caution and advice out of so much love because I love the body of Christ. That's why I'm giving this information. Be careful who you submit to. Be very, very careful because you cannot be, you cannot sit under a tree that is bringing down toxic substance and you feel that you'll be okay. Not at all. Not at all. There will be a big problem. May God help us. I'll be closing shortly. <laughs> the Bible says, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bounds were loosed. I, 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 I don't think I'm going to reach. This is what I wanted to talk about, the end part. But I don't know why the Lord has led me to talk so much about what is the road that is going on in the body of Christ. There is a lot of corruption, a lot of evil that is going on. God must sweep the church. God must cleanse the church. Himself, who is the owner of the church, he will do what he's supposed to do. My duty was to warn you, my brother, was to come and share with you that every time you go to church, you must go praying and believing God. But as you are believing God, you must also have your spiritual eyes open. The Bible says, watch and pray. Your eyes must open. If you look at the Pauline letters, the letters of Paul, most of them he was praying up, up, about their spiritual understanding, spiritual illumination, spiritual eyes to open so that you see, so that you see. The, 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 the church now is where, okay, I think that the man who is doing fine now is in that area. That's the church I'll be going to. That is the upper class church. I want a city church where I can comfortably go and sit and, uh, and uh, they, they have got systems. I want you to know that systems, yes, they are very, very good. We need to be good at administration. But I want you to know that a system, even a bank uses a system to run. There is nothing spiritual about the system that the bank uses. I want you to know that ZRA has a system how they track down and collect the revenue. There is nothing spiritual about ZRA. NAPSA has a system of the way they keep your money all the records that system is not spiritual so we can have a system in the church and the church seem to be orderly that does not mean the spirit of the lord is there 
the presence of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. When Jesus was preaching, the Bible says the power to heal was present. What brings the power in the body of Christ in the church? It is how much time we spend in the word, how much time we spend praying. That's why the apostles said, we cannot be saving on the table. Choose men who can save on the table. We will give ourselves to prayer and the word. We will give ourselves to prayer and the word. We will give ourselves to prayer and the word. One without the other is not balanced. We need them both. We need prayer. We need the word. Yes, yes, you have heard me, my pastor. You have a message for tomorrow. How many hours? Bishop Church was telling me that he prays for 20 solid hours. Like he puts 20 hours against one hour of preaching. 20 hours of prayer in a week against one hour of preaching. How much time have you spent in the presence of God? When is the last time you fasted? You know, you don't need to get familiar with the pulpit and the people you are pastoring. And you are even saying, even if I have not prayed, ah, my people know me. I can just go back to the books and get her or just download from internet and preach. Those are souls. Those are people that God has prepared. Even when God was leading Israel in the the wilderness. He brought fresh bread every day. There was fresh manna. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread as a servant of God. Spend time in the presence of God, hearing the voice of God. Pray for the flock. The servant of God by the name of Samuel says, far it be from me that I sin against the Lord by not praying for you. As a leader, as a pastor, as a man of God, if you are not praying for the flock, it is a sin according to the word of God that Samuel spoke let it be far from me that I sin against the Lord by not praying for you today I just brought this wisdom to the church that you may need to consider what I'm talking about I know what I'm talking about there's a lot of rot in the body of Christ you need to be very careful with laying hands on you you need to be very careful you are interacting with you need to be very careful you are sitting under tonight before you go to church tomorrow pray I'm talking equally to my members pray and say, God is my pastor, the right man. I'm also talking to my members, but I know that God is able to speak. I want you to know that there is a conviction, there is a conscience, the spirit within you is able to tell. Sometimes, you know, there was a lady who was coming to our church. She was coming to our church, and then she had terrible demons. And these demons knew when she belongs to Mount Moriah, we are going to cast out the demons. So what the demons did, the demons gave her demonic dreams about me. She started dreaming like I'm turning into a snake and all this, and she ran away. So we, we, we went to visit and we followed up. I said, no, Pastor, let me just be honest with you. I'm not comfortable with your church. I think there's satanism in your church. I said, what do you mean? She says, I've, I was having these weird dreams. Then I said to her, I can assure you because I know myself, I know the God that I serve. I have never done anything contrary apart from knowing Jesus and him crucified. I know what I'm, I can't shake my ma. If you're more land, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. Let us pray. I want you to call your neighbors to be witnesses. And when we prayed, the demons manifested and says, the reason we wanted, we gave her those dreams because we didn't want her to be helped at Mount Moriah because they like deliverance. So sometimes, yes, I know the enemy can do that, but I know for sure there are also people that are wicked who are standing in the pulpits. I can assure you as a servant of God, they are not saving the interest of God. They are saving the interest of Satan. Their agenda is not to take people to heaven. Their agenda is to just milk your resources, milk your destiny, Steal your star and use your virtues. Oh my God, a lot of people's lives have been sacrificed on evil altars. May God deliver the church. May God bring sanity in the body of Christ. Jesus. Yes, it's not everyone. Some are hired servants. It's not everyone who is a shepherd. Not everyone. No. And God will judge the shepherds who are taking advantage of the sheep. 
the vulnerability of the sheep, God will judge. People are taking advantage of widows, stealing from them. God will judge the church. People are using scripture to manipulate people to get money from them. God will judge. Want you to know, God is watching. And one day, it will be the master's day. I am praying for you that God may grant you favor and grace. God may grant you peace and that it may go well for you. I am praying for you that the true religion that acknowledges Jesus as Lord, that does not only give glory to man, but gives glory to Jesus, is rising. There will be such a revival that will hit the land of Zambia, that people's hearts will turn back to Christ, that people will have the true fellowship with the Holy Spirit. May God help the church. May God help us. Tomorrow as you go to church, may God speak to you. May God perform a miracle in your life. I want you to know that God will make a way, even where there seem to be no way. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. And I know that God has anointed me by his spirit to preach the good news to the poor, says the master. To deliver them that are under captivity. Every power of bondage that has held you captive. Every altar that has held you in one place but it's a wrong place we declare that may that power that veil be lifted from your eyes may your spiritual eyes open and the demonic crocodile power Every water marine spirit they have been using. Every water they raised in the waters to fight you. They raised in their churches to draw you to them. We pray that may God disconnect his genuine sons and daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus, you shall not be under a spell. You shall not be under a spell. Every wrong hands that were laid on you. Father, we pray that remove that evil atmosphere. And the wrong oil that was poured on your head will destroy its power against you. May the Lord set you free. May the Lord deliver you. May the Lord make a way for you. May his face shine upon him. May Jesus, the son of David, grant you mercy and favor in Jesus' name. Let me pray for the people that are sick in the body. You are sick in the body. I want to pray for you. I believe in the power of God. And because of what God is going to do in your life, you will agree that whatever I was talking about is not my intention. I prepared. I was going to talk about Paul and Silas, but how they came out of prison. But the way I started speaking, I felt I was being led to speak like that because I know somebody somewhere is under bondage and was required to come out. I am going to pray for you right now. Something is going to happen wherever you are watching me from. If you are believing God for a miracle, you are believing God for something. If you are sick in the body, if you have never experienced experience genuine miracle a miracle that happens by the power of God I want you to know that even if the devil is masquerading there is genuineness in the gospel of Jesus and God is able to do it and is going to do it now so that you may know there is God in heaven if you are sick in the body I want you to stand wherever you are stand on your feet wherever you are you any sick I'm talking about any sickness that means even if you don't walk stand <laughs> Please stand right now. Shake up a suke biketoyata. Zantela ke tu sapatea. Stretch your hands towards the television, wherever you are watching from, whether it's by phone. Stretch your hand there. The power of God will hit you wherever you are. The power of God will hit you right now. Father, I release into the atmosphere. The resurrection power of Jesus, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let that power go in people's living rooms, in people's sitting rooms, in people's bedrooms, in people's cars. Every sickness now, I command it to be destroyed. Every altar of sickness. Now I command you to bow before the name that is above every name. Everyone watching me, everyone watching me, who is seeking the body i declare receive your healing right now that's your miracle 
That's your miracle. If there is any demon in your life. Last week I prayed for a woman. A woman fasted in Chingola. And I cast out a demon by phone. If there is any evil spirit over your life. If there is any evil spirit behind your sickness. Behind your delay. Behind your stagnation. Behind your poverty. Any spirit that is behind. Let me pray for you. So you foul spirit. I call you out by the fire of the Holy Spirit. On the platform of the blood of Jesus. I command you out. Lose your heart. Now, let go. Let go in the name of Jesus. Let the people of God be healed. Let the people of God be delivered. Let the people of God be free. Father, I speak to every cancerous situation. Every cancer, I curse you. And I command you to heal. Every growth, I command you to disappear right now. Somebody has been bleeding. You have abnormal bleeding. I am praying for you now. I command that bleeding to stop. To stop. To stop right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm sensing a difficult with hearing on the, on the right hand. Hearing difficult on your right hand side. I pray that God open your ears now. Open right now. Open right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I wish I can go on and on calling out people. But I don't have time with me. But I can feel that there are a lot of people that need to be prayed for. A lot of infirmities. A lot of people are sick in the body. I am feeling this. My right hand. This. This. A lot of like you feel like you've carried 90 kg on your right side of your shoulder. I pray for you. I command that demon that has sat on your right shoulder now. Ah! In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. Receive your healing. If you have never given your life to Jesus, this is your day. This is opportunity. Do not harden your heart. The Lord Jesus died for you to take away your sin. I want you to say these words after me. If you have never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I realize I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I now surrender my life to you. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you took away my sins. I believe you are the soon coming king. I now receive you by faith. Thank you for your salvation, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen. May God bless you. May the face of the Lord shine upon you. May God make a way for you. May God order your steps. For the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. God bless you. Shalom and shalom. I remain your brother and friend, Reverend Emmanuel Mamba from Mount Moriah Christian Fellowship, where God is Jehovah Jireh, and the grace is sufficient. God bless you. There is power. Come on. The contest, First Kings 18, 23 to 24. Did you know that life is a contest? From the time of your birth, there has been a contest for your soul, your family, your destiny, and ultimately your faith in God. Paul in 